every child will have specific triggers because there's all that there's there's lots of things like smells and noises and all of those but I think generally like as a general rule of thumb change in routine so any change in routine will be a trigger um, and even a thing where you think like you might take them or want to say you know go shopping after school or do something you know that it that on the outside is actually a nice thing to do or the cinema what you know where it's up a little bit later so lack of routine or breaking from the routine and tiredness i think they are two of the biggest triggers for them completely you know having massive wobbles and 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 dysregulating and losing things and and there's all of the kind of specific triggers to their situations but a routine I, th I feel helps massively and for them to know what the routine is going to be because it brings security it does to anyone really yeah. doesn't it a plan or a routine so we kind of um with my little girl before she even gets out of bed we plan the day and it, it could just be a normal school day but we plan the day because she likes to have it all in order and, and know what's going to be happening um, Our younger person's like that yeah. very much. She'll she'll wake up and she'll say, "So what's the plan today?" Yeah. Yeah. Very much. She needs to know mm -hmm. exactly who's going where, mm -hmm. what we're going to yeah. have to eat. We have a weekly planner where we each have a slot, so everyone can see what everyone else is doing with mm -hmm. our kids being a bit older. But even so much as six weeks holidays or Easter breaks that you would think, you know, young people would be looking forward to. That's just. Mm anxiety <laughs> overload so what we do is we sit down and say well what activities do you want to do this is what has to happen this is the time you have available and I sit and set a timetable you're going to play with Lego from after you've had your breakfast mm -hmm. to here and it normally takes them a day or two into it and then he starts to re be able to relax enough to say actually can I continue with writing my story I don't want to move on to this but when he does feel anxious, he'll go straight back to that just to have it because to have all of that time, whether it be a week or even a couple of days, is just too much mm -hmm. not to have that structure when he's so structured in his routine at home and then his timetable at school and then even after school he has that timetable. Suddenly not to have that in holidays is just too much yeah. to cope with. Yeah. But social situations is a, a big thing because um, we... As a foster carer, you have to meet the five outcomes of every child matters. And one of them is for them to have relationships, friendships. Well, uh, this summer, we didn't encourage any friendships with the older child because that is her biggest barrier. And we've had the, and we, we didn't go on holiday either. That's something else that you're expected to do is to take them on holiday every year. So we, this six weeks, we didn't go on holiday. So we didn't break the routine. We didn't force it to go and join in things or anything. And it's been the best six weeks we've ever had, I would say. So, you know, like little things, like, things that you're seeing that you think would be enjoyable. Taking a child on holiday, you'd think, wow, they love that. But no, it's horrendous. <laughs> Taking them out of what the, where they feel safe. And talking about routine, um, two year ago now, but we still remember it. We still talk about it with her. New Year's Eve, and she was 14, and she came down, like, we always watch the celebrations, the fireworks and everything on TV. So she'd been doing something in her bedroom, and she came down at 11 o'clock, didn't want to watch the thing with us. And she said, so what time do I have to go to bed? considering that she was going to bed at 10 o'clock then. And I said, well, I told you, it's up to you. You can decide when you're tired, because it's New Year's Eve, it's a special thing. So she went back upstairs five minutes later. So what time do I need to go to bed? And I said, do you need me to tell you when to go to bed? Yes. So even, you know, they begin to understand that they need mm -hmm. these routines and everything to, you know, they do need help to feel safe, because that's what makes them... And that's the main thing is the, the feeling safe, isn't it? If they don't feel safe with any anything can trigger the unsafe feeling. Um 
and that can start World War Three. <laughs> I think with um, with our younger person, um, a trigger would be something like um, being put in a situation that she felt very uncomfortable about. And she was very shy at first when she came, and if you took her out in company, mm. that would be a trigger. And she would go what we called weird, because she couldn't cope in that... Uh, in the early days, she couldn't cope with that situation, and we were just taking her along. And we thought what we thought was a normal family type day, evening occurrence, whatever. And she just couldn't cope. She just she just melted. So um, we learned. We took a step. It took us a while to work that one out that she felt very uncomfortable in a lot of people's company. Particularly, she didn't know. She was very wary of people. So we stopped taking her to big occasions and we just did sort of bite-sized things for a long time. So, so that, that we learnt was a trigger, but it took us a while to get it. We just thought she was being difficult and awkward and we didn't understand because we didn't know her background. Our girls have been with us a long time now, I mean the teenagers now, and we're still learning triggers. <laughs> I don't think you ever get to the end of all the different triggers and understand them um, but things like which we grew to understand was a certain colour of car, a green car would trigger things um, lots of things if somebody else is being shouted at so particularly I'm talking about school again but in a classroom situation if somebody else is being told off and if it happens in the morning that stays with our children all day till they come home and you can just say something's happened but even though it hasn't happened to them it's triggered a memory for them so it's like a lot of a lot lots of things can and it could be anything simple simple things like a certain type of biscuit can trigger a memory you know it's that's what mostly comes I think from the very very difficult thing is sometimes our children don't know what's triggered them mm -hmm. because sometimes a trigger can be from when they were pre-verbal so they don't even yeah. they wouldn't be able to verbalize what had triggered them they their mind just knows something has so sometimes it's having to accept that you may never ever know what triggers your child or, or certainly not anywhere near all of them, but yeah. some of the big ones you may never ever know.